uh, as I hope everybody understands out there, uh, PCs, notebooks, Chromebooks uh, were very important devices for us. In fact, uh, biggest growth since 2012. Oops, I just did topic six. Um, just kidding. Um, but we couldn't do the pandemic without them. Uh, at home, we wanted more entertainment at home. And a lot of homes, they actually share laptops or, or desktops. Uh, what we got into was a one device per person in the household, uh, which was big. Uh, we had big drivers in, uh, in, in work because essentially people were told within a two-week period, you need to leave the office and, and go home. So uh, PCs are critical. And I can't help but to give uh, some credit to HP, who essentially uh, coined this beforehand. I don't think they portended the uh, the pandemic, but they sure Alex Cho sure was smart for going out a limb at the time and, and pointing that out. So uh, I'm gonna I'm not gonna. You can read my Forbes article if you want to that goes through blow by blow of what the uh, the top uh, makers brought out, but. What, what, I, what I'll talk about is some of the universal trends and, and some of those that, that you would, that would probably be pretty obvious, obvious to you. These are hybrid workflows, okay? And that's whether you're buying a consumer device to do this or an enterprise to do this, every one of these companies up their game uh, for um, cameras uh, and audio. Uh, for the lids of notebooks, it used to be about how thin you could get it. OK, but the problem with thin is you can't put a very good camera. In fact, you you top out at about 720p uh, resolution, which is which is awful. And right now, like you're you're probably shooting in 4K or 1080 um, uh, 4K, but focusing in which dithers it down and we're streaming at 1080. So those old notebook cameras were just uh, junk. So uh, that is a big trend. And the other thing is audio right? Uh, I'm in my living room trying to work. And I'm, I also have my kids at home uh, because they don't have in school. And I'm trying to manage them uh, at the same time. And it's really, really uh, tough. So we got really good at channeling audio and, you know, taking, a, taking some features from, from companies like Poly, where uh, some of these makers, uh, you can actually stand up and be on a conference call and it'll track you. Sound familiar, Daniel, to uh, what Poly does or Cisco. Uh, and another feature uh, that they've put in their audio driver and their microphone driver is, you know, crumpling up a, a, a bag of potato chips uh, or a dog barking or somebody knocking on the door. They are using real machine learning, not fake AI, to parse out those audio uh, signals. So pretty cool. It's exactly what you would have thought. Dell and, and HP, uh, I'll end with this, Dell and HP hit really hard on uh, technologies that are good for the environment. Not that you can eat you eat the notebook yet, but uh, I know, you know, Dell has been a, a pioneer. You know, they even made some packaging out of mushrooms, which I always thought was fascinating. But Dell came out with a, a concept of a PC that was about as green as that I've ever heard. It's not for sale. Uh, it was more of a, a tech demo. But the one cool part, and I've been harping on this for multiple podcasts, Daniel, is this thing's uh, modular, meaning um, you can take it apart. You can take out the keyboard. You can easily replace the display. Uh, there are different modules that extends the overall life uh, of of the notebook and I've always kind of mocked and you know uh, Daniel we did a, we did a video I think even for Lenovo where it was like uh, the the environmental irony uh, that people don't make more technologies we're always asking people to buy new stuff every three to four years as opposed to uh, making them modular and people can upgrade and add features that that they don't like so pretty long winded there but there's a lot of stuff going on in the PC market. You want the details from all the three big vendors? Uh, check out my Forbes article. Yeah, and we'll spin back at the end about some of the actual market sizing and some of the new insights that have come out because there's more continued strength in PCs. 
which will probably force me down the rabbit hole later of talking a little bit about what's actually going on in the overall tech market because there's some really fascinating stuff in, in both the uh, equities and the industry side that are we're going to need to look at this year, Pat. But, um, you know, he- heading into CES, I think you kind of nailed it. We've got this kind of hybrid remote work story. We're going in and out vacillations of return to work, not return to work. And, you know, this hybrid story is kind of gotten, it's kind of gotten overplayed. I mean, look, everybody's talking about it, whether you're a mobile device maker, you're a collaboration technology, you're making PCs and notebooks, desktops, chips, cloud. It's all, well, people are going to be working every, yes, we know. Yes, people are going to be working everywhere. And by the way, this was already happening before COVID was happening. Uh, having said that, I think there is a bit of a race to making these devices lighter weight, longer lasting battery, which we'll talk more about when we actually get to the chip part of the CES 2022, because this stuff kind of all ties together. Um, more power efficient, more uh, more environmentally friendly. And so we're starting to see some of that progress uh, take place. And of course, we're seeing advancements in the PC to make sure the PC stays uber competitive with our friends in Cupertino, which have made a lot of progress with their new M1. So not much to add there, Pat, but what I will say is that there is still some uh, technology to be desired. There's still going to be some advancements to be made and the notebook is essential, but it can get even better uh, for, for being able to accommodate the kind of work that people are going to want to be able to do in the future. 